Hey all, Alex here at your home of the Music Deep Dive, and today we'll be doing a review of the 1992 biography by Jeffrey Myers, Edgar Allan Poe, His Life and Legacy. Edgar Allan Poe, born the 19th of January, 1809 in Boston, died the 7th of October, 1849 in Baltimore. Effectively orphaned as a child after the death of his mother and the departure of his father, Poe spent time at West Point Military Academy in his young adulthood before withdrawing to focus on his writing. After gaining popularity as a literary critic, Poe expanded into published poetry which caused people to praise his prose and he became one of America's most widely respected intellectuals during the 1840s. Tragically, though, and now famously, Poe's alcoholism and struggles with mental illness brought on by personal losses, including the death of his wife, prevented him from properly reaping the fruits of his labors. He stirred up feuds, he would go dark for months at a time going on these alcoholic binges, and eventually Poe died at age 40 under seemingly mysterious circumstances. The result is a singular legacy that doesn't invent the concept of tortured genius, but asks someone on the street of an example of a tortured genius, and Poe is always going to be one of the first names brought up. It's pretty uh, associated with his uh, character and his works at this point. This book was written by Jeffrey Myers, born the 1st of April 1939 in New York City. A longtime literature professor at several institutions, Myers was teaching at the University of Colorado when this book was written, after which time he stepped back from teaching to pursue writing on a more full-time basis. Myers' books include numerous biographies, not just on authors like F. Scott Fitzgerald and Ernest Hemingway, but uh, also actors as well, including Gary Cooper and Humphrey Bogart. And as I sit back and take in this Poe biography, one thing that sticks out to me is this. Myers may be a literature scholar, but he is almost more at home as a biographer, and that's not something you see very often, especially if you cross-reference some of the other reviews I've done about these literary biographies. The literature scholars who go into biography writing are naturally going to focus on the critical analysis, not always to the detriment of the telling of the author's life story, but they spend more time there because that's what they do best. It's where they're comfortable. Meyer's approach here reminds me more of Jan Swafford's approach in his biographies of classical composers. The analysis moves along at a brisk pace to where you get what you're looking for and it's explained well, but you don't lose pace in the overall narrative, and I love that. And Poe is probably not a difficult writer to do this for, since his works are mostly these short-form poems that don't require these sorts of lengthier plot and character dissections. Also, I mean, his life is just really damn interesting. One thing that's tricky when you write about Edgar Allan Poe is acknowledging the mythos and mystery surrounding his life while also trying to focus on a more coherent story. Poe is not in easy to understand figure. His life and his illnesses are pretty fucking difficult to pin down, and I think it's easy to sort of paint him as this mysterious, shadowy figure who's indistinguishable from the raven that he so famously wrote about. Myers, though, he comes in and really adeptly just cuts through that fog and works really hard to find some concrete understanding of who Poe was at his very core. And really, the conclusion is rather simple. He had a hard life, which affected him both physically and mentally. He had long-standing physical and mental um, kind of disabilities. He had a pridefulness about him that got him in a lot of trouble um, with colleagues and peers over the years. And he was very susceptible to his vices, mainly alcohol. And all those things combined to ensure his life was miserable and short. Poe's death is pretty convincingly summarized, and I think Myers does a good job of acknowledging the uncertainty around it and the conspiracies surrounding it, while also being frank about what the probable conclusion is. Alcohol poisoning. I thought this was a very grounded read, given how easily the narrative could just get lost in conjecture, and for being about 300 pages in length, this book does a lot of work even leaving some time at the end for retrospectives and discussing how Poe's work has been received critically 
through the years. There are a lot of tomes out there in the biography world. Again, I've reviewed some, so I would know. So it's nice to see something this strong and this engaging convey its information across a smaller page count. One book is not quite enough to make me call Jeffrey Myers a truly great biographer, but he handled this subject so well that I am absolutely going to be revisiting him going forward once we get to some of the other authors and cultural figures that he's written about. I was genuinely left really impressed by what he accomplished here. For both Poe diehards and casuals, I think this is a great, great book to pick up. Um, that said, if you're a conspiracy theorist, maybe go elsewhere to get your fix. And that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. As always, more reviews are to come. Tell a friend as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time right here at your home of the Music Deep Dive.